Hello, family and friends. This is the day the Lord has made, and we certainly want to rejoice and be glad in it. We're so grateful that the Lord has allowed us to see this very first day in the month of October. Can you believe that we are now beginning the fourth quarter of the year? Where did time go? It seems like it was just January. It just seemed like it was the first quarter, and now the first quarter has passed us. The second quarter has come and gone. The third quarter has come and gone, and now we are here in the fourth quarter. But well, we declare and decree that this fourth quarter is going to be the best quarter. And so we are excited because we believe that God is up to something. And I pray that you as well have that seared in your heart, that you believe that God is not done yet. God may not have done it for you in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, but I believe that God can do it in October, November, and December. I believe that these next 90 plus days is more than enough time for God to do what God is going to do in each of our lives. Well, we'd like to welcome you to our triumphant Tuesday online Bible study, and we're so glad to have you with us today. As we customarily do, we always check in. And so we want you to type there in the comment section, where are you viewing from on today? Uh, we want to welcome you into this virtual space, into this online Bible study. In the same breath, we also want to know how are you doing today? Are you feeling great? Are you feeling awesome? Are you feeling incredible? Is life sweeter than it's been the entire year? Or are, ha are you having a tough day, a difficult day? Feel free to type that there in the comment section as well. We want to invite all of those who are on Facebook to click share. We want as many people as possible to hear this lesson, to study this lesson, uh, to be blessed, to be refreshed. And so if you would, family, go ahead and click share. In addition to that, go ahead in the comment section, type the name of someone who you're already connected to via Facebook, and this will alert them and let them know that Bible study is taking place. For all of our YouTube users, we say hello. We're so excited. Uh, our YouTube family is expanding and growing. And if you don't mind, go ahead and click the link, the copy link. Go ahead and click the share button. We want as many people as possible to hear the word of God. I want to say this very quickly. Uh, there's some very important announcements uh, that I want to share with you that are going to take place in the month of October for our church. And so this Sunday is Communion Sunday. And so we want to encourage you to start the fourth quarter on a high note. Join us at 8 a.m. 3600 Midway Road, Decatur, Georgia, for our communion first Sunday worship experience. We are excited, excited, excited uh, about what God is going to do on this Sunday and for the remaining Sundays of this year. Uh, then on the second Sunday, we want to recognize our clergy. We are blessed uh, to have uh, Dr. Black with us. We're blessed to have Reverend Bradshaw with us. And uh, we praise God for Reverend uh, Cameron Cunningham, who is pastor in his own church, but certainly comes by to be of support and help. And so we just want to love on them. And so I want to encourage you to come out on the second Sunday as we recognize them. And then on the third Sunday, uh, we understand that this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so I wanna encourage you to wear your pink on the third Sunday. We're gonna stand in solidarity with those who are fighting breast cancer. And we also want to uh, stand in, if you will, in triumphant victory with those who have overcome breast cancer. And so uh, we also are gonna recognize all uh, all of those who have battled cancer, uh, we certainly do not want to discriminate. And so uh, we want to encourage men, if you have as well defeated cancer, come out on that third Sunday. We're going to wear pink. And then on the fourth Sunday, we're going to celebrate uh, pastor's appreciation, pastoral anniversary. Uh, praise be to God. I started pastoring in the year 2010, became a senior pastor in the year 2010. And so I have from that point historically celebra celebrated on the fourth Sunday in October. We're going to be blessed to have Pastor Michael Harris and his congregation coming all the way from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. That's right. They're coming all the way from Pennsylvania to Atlanta, Georgia. So we want to be there to receive them. I'm sure that God has already given him a mighty word. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have a great reception afterwards in the Fellowship Hall. And I'll share this good news with you. I will be launching my newest, my latest book entitled Marriage That Matters Too. So it's just going to be a phenomenal month. 
you want to make sure that you're in place. In addition to that, it's my birth month. And so on October 10th, I'm going to be celebrating another birthday. In addition to that, my son on October 16th is going to be celebrating uh, his birthday. So October is just a great month and we're really excited about it. Well, family, listen, let's pray and then we're going to dive into the word of God. So gracious God, we thank you for this time of study, this time of growth, this time of development, this time of stretching. So God, we ask now that you will pour into our hearts. God, we ask that you will block our mind from any distractions and any hindrances that seek to uh, to encrypt, uh, to, to encroach on this time that we have with you. God, we ask for your forgiveness for all of our sins. God, we ask for help with all of our struggles. And God, we just ask that you will be with us and give us what we need. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And together we said amen and amen. Well, family, uh, we're going to zero in today on Joshua chapter one. If you would, go ahead and type that there in the chat in the comment section. We're going to focus on Joshua chapter one. And this entire month, our sermon series, our preaching, our meditations will all come out of the book of Joshua. So I want to encourage you to familiarize yourself with Joshua. Uh, stay with us. Again, you're going to walk away uh, having learned things that you had never heard before, but also it will be a refresher. There'll be some lessons that you have learned that you'll be reminded of. So again, join us on this journey as we walk through the book of Joshua. And so we want to look today at Joshua chapter one, verses one through six, Joshua chapter one, verses one through six. You'll find it there in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then Joshua. It's the sixth book of the Bible. All right, family, Joshua chapter one, beginning at verse one, reads on this wise. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their answers to give them. I want to share today from the thought, seize the moment, seize the moment. If you would, family, type that there in the comment section. Type seize the moment, seize the moment. Beloved, all of us understand that there are certain moments that happen in our lives that are God moments. There are certain seasons, there are certain opportunities that come our way that only God himself could orchest orchestrate or ordain. We also have come to understand that there are certain moments that when we miss them, they may, ne they may never return back. And beloved, perhaps you've been there, perhaps you, you have some wins, some victories, some decisions uh, that you've made where you are so glad that you seize the moment. But all of us as well have in our record books and our faith files opportunities that we miss, whereby we did not seize the moment. Well, today, as we look at our passage, we are introduced to a gentleman by the name of Joshua. And Joshua is given an opportunity to seize the moment. Now, a couple of things we ought to know about Joshua that are significant. One of the first things we ought to know about Joshua is that he was the successor to Moses. Now, Moses is perhaps somebody you've heard of before. Moses, if you recall, was abandoned as a child because there was this edict that went forth where all the Hebrew, all the Jewish children were going to be killed by the Egyptian Pharaoh. And so here it is in God's providence, his mother puts him down the Nile River. And because God is so good and because God is so graceful and merciful, uh, Pharaoh's daughter retrieves the baby boy out of the river. And as a result, because Moses' mother worked for the king, uh, she helped, hallelujah, look at God, helped to rear and raise her own son. 
And the king did not even realize that that was hers. Well, we know that he was raised by his mother at Pharaoh's house. He had a brother by the name of Aaron and a sister by the name of Miriam. Now, again, they are very, they are two critical people in the ministry and the leadership of Moses because Moses gets a lot of credit, rightfully so. But the truth be told, he could not do it by himself. God sent his brother Aaron to be a mouthpiece for him and Miriam as well to help be a sounding board. And I want to park right there to say this, beloved, that we ought to be grateful for the people that God sends in our lives to help us fulfill our kingdom purpose. I know that there are many who would like to tell the story how they are self-made and how they pulled themselves up from their own bootstraps. But if the truth be told, beloved, no one, and I mean no one, did it by themselves. Well, we know that Moses as well had a temper. Unfortunately, uh, he found himself uh, observing where an Egyptian was about to kill one of his uh, fellow uh, countrymen, an Israelite. And so Moses jumped in and he fought and killed the Egyptian. And so Moses had heart. Moses was one who had a lot of courage. Moses was one who did not mind standing in the gap for others. And beloved, I want to ask the question, has anyone ever stood in the gap for you? Has anybody spoken up for you? Has anybody ever stood up for you? But then let me ask the other question. Have you ever stood up for somebody else? Have you, have you ever spoken up for somebody else? Have you ever taken, if you will, a metaphorical bullet or took, amen, took, took a hardship on the behalf of somebody else? Well, that's the kind of guy that Moses was. Moses had a stuttering problem. And uh, some say, well, that what's the big deal? There are many people who have stuttering problems. Well, this is the challenge that Moses faced. God gave him the obligation and responsibility to be his spokesperson to the Israel, uh, Israelite nation. And Moses found this quite odd, quite peculiar. And be honest with you, he felt, he felt very uncomfortable with God's decision. He says, God, how are you going to ask me to be a spokesperson? And God, I stutter. I do not speak well. I, I have a speech impediment. But just like God, God does not call the qualified, but God qualifies the called. What God does with the with in Moses' case is what we've seen God do many, many times before. We've seen God take the least likely candidate and use them for his glory. And that's good news for all of us because it lets us know that we don't have to have an 850 uh, credit score. Uh, we don't have to have an impeccable track record. We don't have to have a blameless past in order to be used by God. In fact, God often uses people with checkered past to help accomplish his perfect will. And so Moses goes on to be a leader of the Israelites. He is a liberator, one who doesn't mind speaking truth to power. He's the one who spoke to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Uh, he led the Israelites across the Red Sea. In addition to that, he was the one who received the Ten Commandments. So hopefully that background and that biography of Moses gives you a better picture that will help you understand Joshua well. Well, the Bible tells us that Moses dies. And this is very important for us because it's a reminder that all of us have a season. All of us have a season. In fact, Ecclesiastes says to everything, there's a time and a season. Beloved, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. And I want to say all that. I say all that to say this is that uh, don't I do not know what season of life that you're in. But one of the things that we do learn from Moses is that we ought to be preparing the next generation to step up and to pick up where we left off. Beloved, this is so important, this whole idea of mentorship, which Moses embodies. And here it is, when he dies, there is no gap, there are no gaps, uh, there, there, is, there is no disruption. Uh, Joshua's in place to step up and begin to assume leadership. And so we see here that Moses dies. After a very fruitful and productive life, God finally gives Moses some rest. And I want to say this today to somebody who is watching. God is not done with you yet. The fact that you are alive means that there is still more work that God wants you to do. There's still more lives 
that God wants you to impact. You are not dead, but like Moses, you ought to work until God says it's your time. And so as we study this passage, we see that Moses passes away, and then the Lord has a conversation with Joshua. The truth be told, it wasn't much of a conversation. God just tells him point blank, listen, Joshua, you're next up. Uh, in fact, if you all have ever played baseball or softball, but there's a term that is used, batter up. And so basically, that's what God says, listen, batter up, leader up, Joshua, uh, now is your time. And so I want to encourage you, beloved, to always remember that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Uh, and all of us should be in a position and posture because when God opens up that door, when God uh, presents that opportunity, you want to seize the moment. And that's what Joshua do does here. Uh, Joshua had studied under Moses. And when the time came, he was ready to seize the moment. Now notice what God says to him. He says to him, Moses, my servant is dead. God pronounces the benediction over the life of Moses. Uh, he makes it very clear Moses is not coming back, uh, but the work must continue. And this is important because so many people live in the past. So many people don't want to move forward. And God makes it very clear. Uh, listen, Moses is dead. He's not coming back, but we still must move and march forward. So this is what God says. He says in verse two, I need you. And all of these people, now notice how God strategically uh, provides uh, Joshua these directions. He doesn't say, Joshua, this is how I want you to move, but I want you to assemble everybody uh, to go along with you. And that ought to be our mindset. As God blesses us, we ought to want to see other people blessed. And so God gives him a we, us, and our uh, directive. Notice it's not uh, me, myself, and I, but we, us, and our. God says, listen, I need you to recognize that by being obedient to me, a lot of people are going to be blessed. And that is so important for us to understand today because there are a lot of people whose blessings are tied to our obedience. In the same breath, there are a lot of people whose blessings can potentially never be realized if we don't say yes to what God has asked us to do. And uh, it kind of reminds us, if you are recall in the book of Isaiah, uh, when God had that conversation with him and God simply says, who am I going to send? Who's going to go for us? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Now, beloved, then this is what I love. He says, now he get, attaches a promise to it. He says, listen, I will give you every place you set your foot as I promised Moses. Aren't you glad that the promises of God do not have a term limit? Aren't you glad that God's promises do not have an expiration date? God says the same promise that I gave to Moses is the same promise that I'm going to keep with you. And that's why the saints of old would say things like he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we see the consistency of God. God says, listen, the same promise I made uh, I'm going to I'm going to continue it on with you and beloved. All of us, every single one of us, are the beneficiaries of the promises that God has made to previous generations. Many of us are living on borrowed promises, and so here it is. God makes this promise to uh, to makes this promise to Joshua, and the Bible is very clear when it comes to the promises of God. The Bible says that God's word will not return back to him void. And the promises of God are yea and amen. In other words, if God settles, said it, it will come to pass. And so this is what he says. He says, your territory, he begins to give him, if you will, the jurisdiction, the boundaries, and it is expansive. It is bigger than anything Joshua could have imagined, uh, anything that he could have imagined. And God says, listen, when I bless you, I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. <clears throat> and that's a shout for somebody today. They say, that's the kind of God that I serve. I serve a big God that when God gets ready to move, when God gets ready to, uh, to materialize his promises, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think. And I want to encourage you to do this right now, wherever you are, say this with me. I serve a big God. That's right. Say it out loud. I serve a big God. And say this, say this with some more oomph. Uh, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Say this with me. There's nothing 
that is impossible for God. Say this with me. My God will do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. Well, beloved, God gives them this parameter, but God says, not only am I going to bless you with possessions, but I'm also going to bless you with protection. Ooh, Jesus. God said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. And so, beloved, let me give you this final nuggets before we wrap up today. So the question is, who is Joshua? He's the son of Nun. Who is Joshua? He is the successor to Moses. Who is Joshua? He's one of the spies. One of, he's one of the 12 spies that spied out the land. And he was one or two that came back and said, I think we can take it. In addition to that, who is Joshua? He was a spokesman for God. Who is Joshua? He was a spiritual leader of the Israelites. So four quick things I want to drop into your spirit. And these are the four things. If you're going to seize the moment, you must recognize God's decision. God made a decision that Joshua was going to be elevated. Joshua didn't politic for it. Joshua didn't have to bribe anybody for it. Joshua didn't have to kiss up for it, but God made a decision. And I want you to know that God has made a conscious and deliberate decision to elevate you. God wants to take you higher. God wants to give you more opportunities. God wants to open doors for you. God makes a decision. And I love this because no one could take, take, no one could take credit for uh, Joshua's elevation. And when God has promoted you, no man can demote you. My God, my God. Listen, and so we see first and foremost, if we're going to seize the moment, we must recognize God's decision, the decisions that God is making. The Bible says that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts, but God's ways are higher than our ways and God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But then second, we see God's delegation. God tells him, listen, I want you in this delegation of people to cross over the Jordan River. Beloved, God knows who to send into your life. And so uh, there's a delegation that God has already assembled. There's a delegation that God has already put in place, and they will be the ones who will make the journey with you. And beloved, this is important to know because everybody is not going to make uh, the next stretch of the journey. Everybody is not going to be able to go where God's trying to take you. And so notice here, we're going to seize the moment. We must recognize God's delegation. God did not give Joshua the luxury of choosing who he was going to take with him, but God made a decision for him. So beloved, here it is. If we're going to seize the moment, we must recognize God's decision. We must recognize God's delegation, but then we also must recognize God's direction. God does not tell him, listen, I need y'all to rise and go backwards. God doesn't say, I need y'all to rise and go sideways. But God says, I need you to arise and go forward. And beloved, you ought to say that in the atmosphere, forward, forward. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. And as you study the Bible, you will find that God is always moving people from point A to point B. And God says, listen, I want you all to move forward, to move forward. And beloved, I'm speaking that over your day. I'm speaking that over your life. I'm speaking that over your week. I'm speaking that over your month. I'm speaking that over the balance of this year. God wants to move you forward. But again, notice Joshua does not choose his direction. God chooses the, dire chooses the direction for him. And so the question we must ask ourselves is where is God leading me? What's the direction that God is trying to lead me on? And then last but not least, beloved, if we're going to seize the moment, we must hold on to God's declaration. God makes him a promise. He says, listen, just as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. He tells him, listen, not only am I going to be with you, but I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you with all this land, all of these resources. And God uh, declares his protection. He says, nobody uh, even when the enemy tries to steal what I bless you, he, he, he won't even be able to lay his hands on it. Even when people who have jealous and envious spirits desire to try to take what I've given you, 
they won't even be able to cease what I've given you. And so, beloved, if we're going to cease the moment, we must do these four things. We must recognize God's decision. We must recognize God's delegation. We must recognize God's direction. And we must recognize God's de declaration. Well, beloved, here it is. That's our lesson for today. I want to encourage you to seize the moment. That's what Joshua does. Uh, when the opportunity comes, he doesn't have to force his way, didn't have to finagle his way. But when the opportunity comes, he was ready and was able to seize the moment. And so I'm praying and I'm believing open doors for you. And I want you to be ready. I'm declaring and decree that God has opportunities with your name on it. And I want you to be ready. I believe that God wants to do something that will blow your mind and bless a lot of people. But you and I need to cease the moment and be ready when God gives us the knock. Well, I pray that you are blessed today. If you are blessed, go ahead and type blessed in the comment section. Uh, if there was something from today's lesson that stood out to you, go ahead and type it there in the comment section in the chat. Uh, we want uh, others who will view this lesson later uh, to have benefit of your content, uh, of your notes, and we want them to be blessed. We want them to be encouraged. We want them to be strengthened. So we're grateful today for the word of God, which is truly a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We truly thank God today uh, for his word that meets us exactly where we are. And so uh, we praise God for how he moved today. So beloved, let me pray for you as we prepare to wrap up. So gracious God, we thank you for this time of study, this time of growth, this time of stretching. God, thank you for reminding us that you want us to cease the moment. God, we know that uh, you're shifting seasons, that new doors are about to open. And God, we want to be ready to walk through uh, that which you have prepared for us. And God, just like you did for Joshua, God, do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, we ask that you will look beyond all of our faults, all of our shortcomings, and bless us as only you can. God, have your way is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And together we said, amen, amen, and amen. All right, well, family, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday uh, for Bible study. And then we hope to see you this Sunday as we gather once again for Communion Sunday. God bless your family and have a great day. Peace.